Hey friends, welcome to this first class in my first trimester bedtime yoga series. So today's class is all about stretching out through the hips and through the hammies. So this is particularly important when we're pregnant because we're carrying that extra weight in our body. Often our hips and our legs get quite sore and tight. So stretching these out before bedtime can feel really good and can also help to stop restless legs if you get that, some round ligament pain if you get that, and just overall encourage your pelvis into good alignment, which is really important for birth. One word of warning though, in this class, if you have any sort of pelvic instability, SPD, SI, this class is not right for you. We're going to be doing a lot of opening through the hips. And you obviously don't want to do that if you've got instability. So I'll leave some links below for other classes that will be more suitable for you at this time. If you are brand new to pregnancy yoga, I have a free guide that will also be linked below. And like I said, this is a three-part series. So today's class is all about hips and hammies. The other two classes in the series are a yoga nidra, which is a beautiful meditation that will help to set you up for a good night's sleep. And also a yin yoga class where we really slow it down, get ourselves into a really relaxed state and prepared for sleep. The other two classes in the series are available in my online yoga circle and I'll leave the links below for that so you can start your free 30-day trial. If you're practicing with me today though, I would love to know how many weeks pregnant are you, how did you find this class and I hope that you enjoy it. Let's get going. All right, let's start our class today in a wide knee child's pose which is what you'll be practicing throughout your pregnancy. Obviously at the moment as your belly's not that big, Wide knees is not as important, but as your belly grows, you'll need that space for your belly. So just stretch your arms out in front. Take the forehead down to the floor and just gently rock from side to side. So we just start by connecting in with our body, but also with our baby, sending our breath down to our belly, allowing us to connect here with baby through the breath. So we start practicing our ujjayi breath, which is in and out through the nose, creating that gentle oceanic sound by constricting the throat slightly on the exhale. And then as you inhale, lift the head up and just walk the hands over to the left. Take the right hand on top of the left and gently soften the head back down. So getting a beautiful stretch through that right side of the body. And then walking the hands all the way over to the opposite side, left hand on top of right, softening back in. And then slowly coming back into the center, we come up into our tabletop. So we bring the knees underneath the hips now and bring the hands underneath the shoulders. And I just want you to take a little rock from side to side. So just feeling into those hips, maybe noticing any tight spots. And then we start to take some circles. So you might sit right back towards the heels. You might be able to come all the way forward, just feeling into what feels nice for your body. Maybe noticing any tension that you might be holding. So sometimes one side of the body is a little tighter than the other. I'm going to do a little cat cow here. So come back to your tabletop with your flat back. And as you inhale, I want you to lift the tail, lift the head. So just a gentle arch here. And then as you exhale, round through the body, looking back towards the thighs. Inhale as you lift the tail, lift the head. Exhale as you round. One more of these. Inhale. And exhale. And then return the spine to neutral as we step the left foot forward and come into our kneeling lunge. So starting to really stretch into those hips. If you feel you need the support, sometimes it can be nice to have the bolster in onto that leg just so that you're not opening too much. But if it feels good for now, you can lean forward into this stretch. Maybe take a bit of a rock and a roll here. It doesn't have to be a held pose. You don't have to find stillness in your yoga. You can always rock and roll and really find what feels good in your body which when I'm pregnant is often <laughs> moving. I don't like being still too often. Don't know if it's that instinctual need to rock our baby slightly that comes out when we're pregnant. All right, 
And then we're going to walk that foot all the way over to the opposite side. Coming into our pigeon pose. So the knee comes down behind that left wrist. And then just tuck that foot in towards the groin as you stretch the other leg out behind you. We're just going to stay here and upright. So inhale, lifting through the spine, finding length through that back. If it feels good to, you can tuck the toes of the right foot and then lift that thigh off. So you get engagement through that right hip. We're still getting a nice stretch through the front of that hip though. See if you can soften everything else though. So soften through the shoulders and the face. Keep breathing deeply into that belly. And then return that right knee back down and see if you can bend the foot up so you'll get a nice quad stretch here. If you've got the range, you could reach the hand around and draw in a little bit more, which feels really good. But if you don't have the range, perfectly okay to stay here. And then gently release that foot down. I want you to bring the knee in slightly so that you can come back to your tabletop and just come back to those circles, moving gently through. Really tuning in, listening to your body, what feels good for you. And then coming back to tabletop as you step the right foot forward this time, coming into that kneeling lunge. And again, either finding stillness if that feels good or moving around. So I often find I like to close my eyes when I'm practicing yoga, especially when I'm pregnant. It helps just to bring everything in. My focus is with my body and with my baby and it's away from my thoughts and my thinking brain, which is always a good thing to turn off. And then start to slowly walk that front foot across as you bring the right knee down, tuck the foot in towards the groin, stretch the left leg out, find that length through the spine. And then see if you can soften the shoulders. So if this is too much opening through the hips, you can also bring that bolster in underneath that right hip. It's just going to prop you up a little bit so that you don't have so much opening through the hips. If it feels good to do so, tuck the left toes, engage that left leg as you lift the knee off the mat. Keep the face soft neck and shoulders relaxed, belly moving, breath moving deeply into the low belly. And then release the left knee down if it feels good to do so. Bend that left knee, bringing the foot up, maybe finding the foot with the hand. I can barely reach mine on this side. It's funny how we're different on both sides. And then gently release the foot down. Bring the knee in slightly so that you can step back to your tabletop, come back to that rock and roll. And I want you to tuck the toes under. We're going to peel back into our downward facing dog. So lifting the knees up, lifting the hips high. Letting the head and neck just relax and drawing the heels down towards the floor. This can feel really nice up the back of the hamstring. So just gently drawing the energy down through the heels. It doesn't matter whether they touch the floor or not. It's just that intention to draw them down. And then start to bend into the knees, taking them wide as you come into like a modified malasana. So you're coming into quite a low squat. You've still got the hands pressing in, but the knees out nice and wide. Head and neck is still nice and soft and relaxed. Should be getting a really nice inner thigh stretch here. Let's take five full deep breaths.
and then slowly walk the hands all the way up as we come into our malasana. And just like we did in the other poses, I want you to find a little movement here. So maybe you lift the hands up, giving you a bit more space, maybe finding a bit of a roll through the shoulders as well and just rocking and rolling on the feet. So when I sit in malasana, my heels don't touch the ground. So I like to rock and roll so that the heels do come down to the ground. I get that little bit of a calf stretch and just in a way that feels good for my body. So make sure that you're doing the same for yours. And then from here, I want you to come to a wide leg forwards fold. So the feet are at the edges of the mat. Lift the hips up and keep the hands grounded so you're nice and stable through the hands. Lots of bend through the knees and let the upper body hang. If it feels good to do so, you could press energy down through the heels to straighten up the legs slightly again, getting that stretch through the hamstrings or just stay here, letting the upper body be heavy, maybe gently shifting the weight from balls of the feet to heels if that feels nice. And then slowly bending back into the knees, coming back to your malasana. This time we'll find our full malasana. So come to lengthen through the spine. Bring the elbows inside the knees, hands to heart. This is a good pose to start practicing our pelvic floor awareness. So I just want you to be aware of what's happening in the pelvic floor here at the moment. And then I want you to take a deep breath in. Let the pelvic floor be soft. And then as you exhale, so as the diaphragm starts to lift, I want you to engage those muscles of the pelvic floor and lift them in and up. So like you're lifting the muscles of a hammock, which is kind of what they look like hanging from the pelvis. A few more breaths like this. So inhale, relax. Exhale, engage. Inhale, relax. Exhale, engage, and then bring those hands down. Bring the knees in towards each other, so just like a little bit of a rebalance as you squeeze the inner thighs together. And just roll the shoulders back and down, softening through that upper body. We're going to come to sit now, so if you have a bolster, it can feel a lot more comfortable to sit up on a bolster so that the hips are a little bit higher than the legs, but if you don't have a bolster, cushions, a rolled up towel will work perfectly as well. We've taken the legs wide. I want you to draw the toes back towards you and just gently lean forward until you can feel the stretch enough for your body. So that might mean the hands come forward for you. That might mean you're completely upright if you've got quite tight hamstrings. Soften through the face and the neck and the shoulders. Use that breath to slow down your practice. See if you can breathe in for a count of five, and breathe out for a count of five. And then slowly sitting back up. I need to draw the legs in, bringing one leg out in front of you. The other sole of the foot is resting on the thigh. Inhale, the arms tall, so finding that length through the spine. And then exhale, folding forwards. So again, soften through the head, the neck, the face. You could feel quite a nice stretch through the calf, but also through the hamstring as well. Keep the leg nice and active so the thigh keeps pressing down into the mat. And then as you sit up, we're going to take a little bit of a twist here. So just really gently pressing the hand to the outside of the thigh and looking over that back shoulder. And gently releasing back to the front, taking the other leg out in front. We swap sides, find that length, send the breath through the body. And then exhale, fold in. And 
and sitting back upright, we take that gentle twist, pressing the hand into the outside of the thigh, looking over the back shoulder. And then gently releasing back to the front. And bring the soles of the feet in towards each other just so that the knees fall out to the sides. So we've got like a diamond shape with the legs. And then again, you can either sit up tall here or gently lean forward, getting that gentle stretch through the inner thigh. And then coming up, take a seat. We're going to come off the bolster for the moment just so that we can lie back down on it as we come down to a couple of floor poses before we finish our class today. So it's really nice to have this bolster as support for the upper back. I just want you to bring the soles of the feet in towards the floor. I'm just going to take a gentle rock from side to side so you can use the breath to give you a rhythm, inhaling to one side, and then exhaling to the opposite side. This can feel quite nice on the lower back as well, giving it a bit of a massage as the edge of the bolster presses in. Can also feel quite nice on the glutes as you rock and roll them on the floor as well. And then bring your legs back to center. I want you to bring one ankle across the opposite knee and then gently use the muscles of this leg to press the knee away. So you should get quite a nice stretch in that hip. If it feels good again, you could rock from side to side, always allowing yourself to find movement in any of these poses if it feels good or stillness if you prefer. And swap sides, bringing the left foot, or whichever one you've still got yet to do, over the opposite knee. So you'll notice that my foot is flexed. This helps to protect the knee. Gently press that knee away. Maybe find that movement. And then gently release the foot down. So you've got some options now as we settle into our meditation. You could bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees fall out to the side in your butterfly, perhaps bringing some pillows underneath the knees if you prefer to bring them up a little bit higher. You could bring the feet to the outer edges of the mat and let the knees fall in if that feels better for your hips. You could take the legs out straight or even put some supports under the knees just to bring them up a little bit if the low back is any sort of issue. So choose your option here, let the palms rest up towards the ceiling, closing down the eyes when you're ready. You can also bring the hands to the low belly if you'd like that little bit more connection here with baby. But it's completely up to you. I want you to send the breath down to the low belly. Imagine the breath moving around baby softening and relaxing your entire body but also theirs as well. Let the entire body rest, becoming heavier, softer, perhaps noticing any points of tension, and breathing into those spaces, sending the breath to that part of your body that feels tight, imagining and expanding with the breath and then softening as the air leaves and you exhale. Continue breathing deeply and fully in this way. 
giving yourself the chance to unwind, to slow the mind down, to be present with the body, with your baby, as we prepare for sleep. And when you're ready to, we start to slowly wake ourselves up, wriggling fingers and toes, bringing the feet back to the floor if you had any of the other positions, and then using the hands to support you to come up, so tucking chin to chest and using the arms to support the body as you rise, just so that we're not putting too much pressure on the core, even in these early days. Let's come back to centre. Let's take a few little rolls. It's releasing out through the spine, through the pelvis. And then bring the hands to the belly, connecting in with baby here. Being present of this moment, whilst it can be exciting to get caught up in all of the whens and ifs and imagining baby in your arms. There is also beauty in this moment here with your tiny little baby nestled safely in your womb, with your body growing and nurturing them. Be present here. Be proud of your body here for all that it's doing. Bring the hands to heart. Bow down the head. Thank you for practicing with me today. As always, it is an honor. Look forward to practicing with you again soon. Namaste. Thank you again for sharing this class with me. If you would like to practice the other two classes in this bedtime yoga series, like I said, you'll find them in my online yoga circle. All the links will be down below. See you soon. Namaste.